Hi, my name is Belle and I'm one of Grace's designers here at The Doer's Way. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create beautiful thumbnails for your YouTube videos. I love Canva because you don't have to be a design whiz to use it. Sometimes you can get overwhelmed with all the tools and the shortcuts that you need for InDesign, so Canva is the perfect place to start if you want to start designing for your business. Hello there, today I'm going to be showing you how to create YouTube thumbnails using Canva. This is just a really easy way to make your YouTube thumbnails look more aesthetic, on your brand and overall just appealing to the viewers. So you start by going to create a design and then you put in your custom dimensions which is 280, 1280 by 720. Create design and that creates your custom template size for your YouTube thumbnails. So my next step is to go through and um, screenshot your image to go on your thumbnails. So this is the video we're doing today of Laura. So you just press play. I like to put it on around 1080p, so the best quality it can be, and then go full screen wait for that to flick through. So these ones you really want a smiling face or one that looks educational or one that just is a bit more appealing for the person doing the video. So that one looks good. So you go through and you screenshot that one. There you go. Simple as that. That's how you get your image. Now, I normally like to make four to six variations of our YouTube thumbnails. It's really important for your brand to have different variations of YouTube thumbnails so the audience isn't thinking it's the same video every time. As you can see here, I've created a template and several different templates using our pinks and whites. So this just adds a difference to all of the videos and makes the viewer see that there's something different. I really like to use triangle shapes and graphics and pretty much anything that will make it look a little bit more doer's way um, and make it stand out from the rest of the videos. So my next tip is adding text and call to actions. So here we've added the text, how to get comfortable on camera, and here is your call to action. It's really important that the text has highlighted words. So for us, we decided to make two different two different weights using our fonts. So we've got a how to get in a bold font and comfortable on camera in our regular font. And then our CTA is just here. So the CTA is really important because it makes the viewer think that they're going on a journey along your YouTube thumbnail, enough for them to click on the video to watch it. So we like to do this in our script font, making it look a little bit more girly, a little bit more aesthetic. And we've done the same on all the other pages as well. So we've used it here with a let's go or live now or watch now. On this one, we've all got let's go, but it's really important to have these here. Now that I've chosen the dimensions and screenshotted that image, I like to go through and create four to six different YouTube thumbnail templates. Now I don't go through and do this every time but I like to go through when I'm first starting and create four to six so that I can just fill in the image every time we need a YouTube thumbnail. And it's really good for content marketing. And it's really good for if you need to pump through a lot of thumbnails, um, just having those templates there makes it so easy just to insert an image, change the text and be able to upload it as quickly as possible, meaning that it's not a super time consuming task. So I like to go through, for us, our, um, our color is pink. So I just like to make it really simple, of course, going through and putting your grid on the background first is really important to make sure that you can put your image in there. And then I like to go through and add some shapes. So here you can just go to shapes here and choose any shapes that you like. You can go square. So I like to use the square one and then put on a little bit of a tilt. So then you can make it a little bit bigger on either side, just like that. And then you can see you've got a bit of a tilt there and then making it our do as way colors. So you've got a really cool block here and you can make another one and we'll get rid of that. And then you can use all different shapes, all different sizes. So you could put this one in the corner, make it bigger and then choose to do a different color, like a white 
And then you could make another one with this on the other side. Like there's so many options you can make and you don't even have to make four to six. You can make as many as you want really. And it just means that there's more variation and that like it creates something different with your viewers that they can, I guess, have more interest in it. But yeah, so I like to go through and create a few just like that. And maybe that one can go on the other side. Maybe you can have a white one of these as well. But yes, so that's what I like to go through and do. Just make a whole pile so that it's a little bit different. Um, and yeah, gives you a lot of options. So if an image doesn't work, um, you can go through and pop on any of these and see if it works. So now what I like to go through and do is um, put all of my text on the page. So the video we screenshotted was how to get comfortable on camera. So you go through and press this text button just here and add a heading. Now our brand really likes to use capital letters. So I'm gonna make them all capitals and make sure it's in our font, just like that. Now I really like to create a point of difference with um, the weight of the font. So because this is all the same weight, I'm gonna get copy that and get rid of it and just make this a large weight. So I'll make it white so you can see it better on the pink, just like that. Make it bigger and then adding oopsie day and then you add comfortable on camera. See how that's gone into a thinner weight? That's exactly what I want. So then I'm going to make that white as well. That's probably a little bit too thin. So I'll choose our regular font. Make sure it's to the left. There you go. Just like that. And it looks interesting, it looks beautiful. And now I'm just gonna fit it. There you go, put it in the middle. And then you can just copy and paste it on all of your templates. You might have to change some of them to pink. Now some of them won't fit which is why it's a really good idea to do different variations because then you can work out which text works better on which one and it just gives you so many options without having to fit all the time. Now for our call to actions. I really like these ones to be in different fonts because it makes it stand out and it also is an opportunity to make it look a little bit prettier. So I like to go through and add a heading and write something like, like watch now or let's go or live now. Whatever it is you're promoting, like it's just an opportunity for the viewer to see that this is now a segue into the video. So we're gonna go, let's go. Now to make this one stand out a little bit more, I tend to choose a different font from the original font. So I like to go through and choose our script font. And you can see it just fits really nicely there. Make it a little bit bigger and of course match it to the text. There you go. And you can place that anywhere. You can make that whatever size you need to. It's really simple, really easy. And then you pretty much just copy paste it where you need to go. So now my next step is adding little graphics to it. So obviously you don't have to do this, but we really like to do it because it just adds a little something something to each of our um, YouTube thumbnails. And we find that it's really appealing and it also creates a point of difference from all of our other branding. Um, and yeah, it's really important to make sure that it's all cohesive with your brand, obviously, so you can't just go off and do any kind of graphic but we have created these ones in Photoshop or you can buy these on Canva or I know that Canva does have elements that are really easy to use. So you can just go here and go elements and look them up here. So you could just go like graphics and it should come up with a whole pile of graphics that you want to use. But for this particular one, we decided to do some uploads. So we just like to put it on like that, maybe flip it around a little bit increase size depends really what you want to go for with the feel of your brand so we really like these ones because they just you know can sit up there really simply and yeah they just look really appealing so I'll go through and do that to all of them
All right, so now the fun bit. You get to add your image. So I really get excited about this bit because you've done all of this work, you've made it look nice, and now you can go through and add your image. So upload an image and video just here, and then go, I think I screenshot it to the desktop. Add that one. So obviously it will have to upload. All right, now that that one's uploaded, you can go through and add it to your grid. So because this one is a little bit bigger, you can resize it. Done. So Laura's face is in the middle right now, and I don't really like where that is, so I go through and delete the grid and just put the image in like that. So because you've got these blocks here, it's a really good opportunity to kind of hide the image behind it. So I go through and I put it there and then you go position backwards, backwards. And just like that, she's sitting in the corner just there. And you can move it over as much as you want. So I find that's a really good trick to do. But of course, you can use the grid if you want to. And if your image is really far, the grid is really a good one to use. If you're swapped, swamped for time um, and you just need to quickly insert something, the grid's really good to use. But you have the two options, which is really cool. So this one I can probably use the grid for if it will let me put it in. So this one you can probably use the grid for. There you go. Just pop her in there. And this one as well. So that one didn't work. So you go through and delete that. Pop her in. Slide her over. Position. Just like that. So there you go. Now you've kind of got an idea of what you what the image looks like and how it may appear. All right, now that you've done all of your variations, you can now hit publish, download, and download all your pages, and it will go through and prepare your design. And if you open it here, you can see that all of them are sitting in here, and you can choose which one best suits your design. Thanks for watching. I hope you grow to love Canva as much as I do. I can't wait to see what thumbnails you start coming up with for your YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment below for more ways that I can help you design for your business.